happy. You know, there are so many devices out there, but management of each of them that are existing in a different state is damn near impossible, right? So the, the more you have, the more difficult it is. Hey guys, welcome to Meta Toolbox, a video interview series where we try to save the world by solving one engineering challenge at a time and one challenge that has recently emerged, well, at least in the last couple of years for embedded and IoT designers is the uh, need, the propensity for everybody to want to be able to continuously update and continuously integrate uh, their, their products. And uh, to help us get through that new maze of challenges, we brought on Brandon Chibley, who is the CTO of Toradex. How are you, Brandon? I'm doing good. Thank you, Brandon, for uh, inviting me on. Very, very good. Now, happy to have you. Um, so, like I said, right now, everybody, and actually not right now, for the last few years, everybody's been connecting devices, deploying them in the field. And then all you have to do is, if they have a network connection, is just send your software updates over the, over the internet, and poof, you've got a brand new device, right? It's simple as pie. I mean, of course, that would be nice, and that is the simplicity that we're striving for. But um, you know, there's a little bit of a, a, a transformation that needs that still is happening, right? It's a, this kind of move from uh, this kind of uh, traditional mindset into one that's really uh, IoT oriented, kind of uh, ship once versus uh, ship continuously. And so that's one of the biggest challenges that we see is 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 really not so much even at the technology level. It starts with the mindset and thinking about how the processes need to change. So, you know, I, it's one of these things where if you can get uh, change, really transform the way the thinking is, is going in the organization, then we start looking at uh, tooling and, uh, you know, the technology behind it. One of the things I always find a little bit concerning is, you know, when we're talking to people and we're, we're explaining, you know, the, the value of uh, continuous delivery, particularly in cases where people are connected, they, they need security is, you know, they, they, they'll say things like, yeah, that's, that's where we need to go. But we want to first start with like the, the core design of our product. And uh, that's always kind of an alarming signal, right? It's uh those things like uh, connectivity, security, updatability, uh, the need to, to manage devices at scale, these, these cannot just be afterthoughts. I mean, these are things that really need to be designed into the, the core of the product. Uh, that's a great point. Uh, obviously, you can't, you just like with security, you know, we talk a lot about not bolting it on. You can't really bolt on uh, the idea that you're going to continuously integrate and continuously deliver software to, to a, something that's going to be deployed out in the field for who knows how long. Um, but you mentioned that it's not really a technology challenge or, or you know, the technologies are there. Uh, it's more in, of a shift in thinking beyond just that mindset of, you know, we, sh we need to think about it in this way. What are some of the issues that developers and, and organizations in general are running into as they try to de now deploy these IoT devices in these CI and CD sort of contexts? Yeah, as they begin that shift, uh, you know, they're also trying to sometimes use these, the traditional tooling, the methods, and just making that more continuous, you know, in terms of the deployments. But, you know, these, and, and I'm going to be speaking in terms of application processors, that's the space that Toradex is more involved in rather than the microcontroller space. But, you know, if you look at the traditional systems there, we're talking about AB updates, make, maybe package management as a form of being able to update software. And, you know, looking at AB updates, for example, I mean, here you're rebuilding a whole system image every time you're going to do an update it's not bandwidth efficient transferring that whole thing over every time you do an update it requires a reboot and you know the one advantage is it's kind of easy to version control the whole system image um, but on the other side with packages you know here you have basically the flexibility to individually update things uh, more bandwidth efficient perhaps um, but I, I refer to this as like procedural control like um, what you're doing is actually taking steps in terms of all right update a package now do this, do that, and you're to evolve the system state over time. I mean, the problem with this is that you get what I call configuration drift. Like if you do this at scale with thousands of devices, now you've got all these devices that uh, rely on this sequence of operations to essentially result in an identical state in every instance. And many times it doesn't. So you have devices that are all a little bit different from each other. And managing that at scale is, is really challenging. So 
piecing to you know and there, there's actually one other point i think is important to mention here which is in addition to these like traditional update systems which which do work uh in many cases the other challenge is people are bringing in like solutions from different vendors you maybe have a, a hardware some software you got these update services and maybe um like device management frameworks and stuff and then trying to integrate it all together right and the problem is is you go through all this pain of the integration you finally get it working well the last thing people want to do is go and change it and then update it and do that frequently right that it actually deters them from frequently updating devices so that brittle integration maturing and like requalifying that's uh, that just takes forever so what we believe is necessary here to ship continuously manage devices at scale are are some things like declarative definition of software and strong revision control processes and uh things like immutability and that with these things you can maintain some tight control over your fleets at scale immutability um you know just taking it you know at face value you can't really change it right so that's a little bit paradoxical when you think about the fact that you want to make something immutable on a bunch of systems that you're trying to change all the yeah. time. So can you explain how you're using the term immutability and what that means? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you picked up on this point. It's it's an important one. Um, what we mean by immutability is not that the, the software that's deployed on the device will never change. What it means is, you know, there's not an administrator logging in and like live patching systems and, and things like that. I like to use this uh, analogy that's common uh, pets versus cattle. And so let's let's think about everyone's favorite pet, the raspberry pie, right? It's it's so great for these uh, pet projects and proof of concepts and things out of the box. Great experience. Um, you can already go in and like install custom packages and, and tailor the needs of the system. But that's great for those uh, one-offs, and there are ways to make this work at scale. But you know, managing this with thousands of devices uh, in this way is is just chaos. And so, this is one of the reasons why we like to think of uh, a fleet of devices like cattle. Um, the idea is the software that's actually deployed is when you deploy it, it stays exactly the way you expect it to be until you push a new revision of software to the device. And so that's what we mean by immutability. Uh, what we use is a system on, uh, on the device uh, called OS tree. It's like Git, but for the file system. So if you are used to revision controlling software, like in the source code, similarly, our update system is revision controlling the file system of the whole system like that. So you're, you're basically pulling and checking out known revisions of the file system and controlling the state of all the files on the system. Uh, and, you know, it's efficient in the sense that when you push an update, you're not pushing an entire image, you're, you're only pushing files that are changing. It supports rollbacks. You can imagine like uh, you can check out different revisions of the file system using such a, uh, a construct, branching, merging, all these really cool things that come with uh, a Git-like um, revision control system. Well, let's take a look at part of that stack in Horizon. What are you going to be showing us? Yeah, so uh, let me give you a, just a quick rundown about uh, of what you're about to see here. So um, Horizon is an industrial IoT platform. It's you know based on Linux. It uh, builds on our Linux uh, uh, board support packages, but it includes an operating system called Horizon uh, Core, uh, again, Linux-based. And it also includes tooling like ID extensions. Uh, and then also, um, well, the tooling that I'll also show you for um, uh, integration, and then uh, which is called Horizon Core Builder. And then there's also those uh, cloud-based IoT services like over-the-air updates, fleet management, uh, things like that. So let me uh, start with showing you just like what continuous delivery looks like using a system like Horizon. Awesome. So what I'm actually starting out by showing you is uh, is in GitLab, right? It's a revision control system. I mentioned how important it is, revision control. So for us to do um, continuous delivery, this is an example of uh, something called GitOps. If, if you're not familiar, it's it's actually like leveraging uh, Git-like workflow for uh, not only revision controlling the software, but then pushing those changes actually into production uh, through integration testing deployments. 
uh, and then ultimately uh, down to devices in the field. So here, this is a uh, an example repository. This is my how might be how you manage the configuration of your uh, software. And you know, traditionally with something like the Yocto project, people are doing this, but down at the source code level for all the different components that are in the operating system. So this is, we believe overkill in many cases. Um, it's still possible. You can build Horizon Core with the Octo project uh, today if you have that deep need for customization. But in most cases, our customers, they can take an operating system that's been built, tested, you know, and uh, verified is maintained by Toradex, and they can just apply some customizations on top of it. And so this uh, system I'll show you is uh, designed to do that. You can work with any revision control system, uh, CI solution. Here I'm showing you GitLab CI as one possibility. And so we have a tool called Horizon Core Builder. It has a configuration file that looks uh, a bit like this, where you specify like, all right, what's the base image that I'm going to build on? Here it's a uh, Horizon Core image coming from Toradex, specifying what version of that image. We're being very explicit about uh, the software that we're going to build on. And then we have customizations like a splash screen, some file system uh, changes that will be overlaid on top of uh, this uh, base image. And there are other things like you can do custom device tree overlays, um, like you know custom kernel parameters or kernel modules, uh, but we'll keep things simple for now. And then finally, uh, specify some output information. So that's what this kind of file looks like. What I'm going to show you is just you know when you commit a change to this kind of repo in the true kind of GitOps workflow, it's going to kick off uh, an integration build. And so uh, that pipeline would look something like. Uh, this this is a very simple version of such a pipeline where there's only two stages one to build the image and two is to deploy it so you know we integrate the image it gets deployed this is using um the uh Tryzen core builder software i mentioned from uh toradex it gets deployed in this final step to um Tryzen platform so this is at Tryzen.io. this is how you manage your devices centrally and in, in a cloud-based uh, application. And that package, once it gets delivered here, well, we'll see here. Then when we want to push the updated software, we might start with our test fleet, right? We've uh, built the new software, gets deployed into Horizon. And we say, let's uh, first verify that everything's good using our test fleet. So I can initiate an update, select this custom package, and uh, you know, continue with the with the update. In a very similar way, this is actually going to update the entire uh, operating system. You can also update packet or um, sorry containers, application uh, containers in the same kind of way. And so with Horizon, these things are kind of decoupled, right? We use app uh, containers for applications. The OS can be separately managed. In cases where there's uh, you need to synchronize those updates, we also can. Uh, manage that. So what I wanted to show was just this, how simple it can be when you're working with the right, first of all, mentality, but also the right tooling uh, to really achieve continuous delivery of software. Yeah, so the update is complete. And if you click on a device here, you'll see information about the currently installed software. This is the, the version that we just pushed. Uh, we also see like what application package is currently there. And, uh, you know, there's a uh, you know, some other information being shared. Another update I'll give you a little inside uh, uh, information on that's coming is, is more device information that we intend to show. Uh, actually getting up-to-date uh, uh, monitoring information from devices. And so this, this update's coming very soon, actually, uh, showing CPU memory usage, uh, bandwidth, uh, you know, disk IO, and, and these kinds of uh, measurements. And that's on a per device basis? Yeah, per device, but we'll also uh, also coming is the aggregate view of this information across a fleet. So the idea there, um, of course, this is something that's not yet available, but um, uh, is to be able to provide fleet uh, operators, you know, insights into the state of their fleet, let them know when there's anomalies, uh, things like that. Obviously, that's all great, enabling all of the all of the buzzwords that you use when you're trying to market <laughs> um, electronics, but the thing that you brought up earlier is really important, which is, okay, now 
you know, you provisioned your devices, you know, they're, they're deployed, you're updating them, but over time, you're going to have to maintain this entire infrastructure and, you know, make sure that you're able to monitor and manage all of these devices. Who's going to do that? Yeah, it's a good question. So um, Toradex, one of the values we provide, and particularly with this uh, full stack concept I described, um, allows us to do the integration of the hardware, the software, the services, uh, and make sure that stuff's frequently kept up to date, that we're um, you know, regularly uh, testing and uh, delivering the latest and greatest uh, from Toradex. That simplifies what our customers would need to do, which is uh, then just deploy their application on top. And by you know, this architecture of containerization helps ensure that you know, the deployment of their application onto this image is uh, relatively straightforward, right? Uh, uh, at least more simple than the traditional model of build an entire operating system image uh, around an application. So, um, but we also have the fleet operator in mind with Horizon. So we know there's somebody out there who's, who's gonna have to take care of all these devices in the field. And so we're giving them those tools to, you know, manage the configuration at scale, uh, you know, organize their devices uh, according to fleets, uh, integrate and deliver the latest software, both from Toradex and uh, from them and possibly other suppliers. Um, so, you know, this is uh, what we have in mind. And, um, you know, we think giving people insights, information and control allows them to, you know, be effective in uh, managing those devices at scale. So for those who are interested in finding out more about Horizon, um, you know, where can they go? Is there anywhere that they can, you know, peek under the hood a little bit like you've just shown us today without, um, you know, deploying an entire fleet of, of devices? Yeah, absolutely. So Terizon.io is uh, the, the website to check out. So from there, you can already, um, first of all, get the, get the rundown with, uh, you know, get the details of what's actually supported there. Um, also see, you know, what options there are for um, you know uh, different tiers of working with Horizon? We've got a completely free tier, so you can use this to to evaluate Horizon. Uh, you could even go in production with the free tier if uh, if if you're satisfied with the constraints. But we also provide a more feature rich uh, commercial tier experience, and even there you can get a uh, free trial to work with the uh, commercial tier. And so. Um, all you need is uh, some uh, Toradex product to get started. Uh, you may not have one today, so you know, uh, uh, contact us either by going to Toradex.com, you can uh, buy hardware right off our website, or contact us directly, uh, one of our sales folks. They'll make sure that you get it set up with the right, uh, right things. And um, also, you can check out uh, source code at, at GitHub. Uh, look for the Toradex organization. Take a peek, uh, you know, uh, under the hood as you speak, and uh, let us know um, your thoughts. I mean, that's the most important thing for us. Mm -hmm.